Hello everyone, welcome to Art Idea. My name's Kirsty. This artwork we're going to do is a dreaming story. As this dreaming story is all about you, we need to begin with a preliminary chart where we're going to start thinking about elements in your life that are important to you and how we can translate these into symbols. At the top, write all about me. Then divide your chart into six columns. First column, symbol for me. Now this is going to be the symbol that everyone will identify with you. So when we create our design, it is going to go into the middle. So we need to think about something that is so essential to you. The next one, I like, my favourite. I love to wear, my favourite sport. I love most. As this is a design about you, obviously you could change any one of these titles to suit your personality. Symbol for me, I'm an artist. For me, my symbol is going to be a palette. When we do these drawings, what we want to do is keep them really clean, just as clear line drawings with only as much detail as we need to describe the symbol and a couple of splashes of paint that I'd find on my palette. If you're unsure about what your symbol is, you could use the whole column to play around with various symbols until you get the one that's right for you. I like. What is something that you like to do? I love to cook, so I'm going to say I like cooking. My obsession is cooking cupcakes. So again, a very simple line rendition of a cupcake. Big cakes, big round cakes. I could have a slice of cake. My favourite. This could be a favourite object that you have or toy or possession of some description. I have a favourite, a ladybug. So again, a very simple drawing, nothing too complicated that I'll be able to colour when I get to the design section. I love to wear. I love necklaces. My favourite sport definitely has to be touch football. And last one, I love most. I love walking. I have some fantastic hills I can walk through where I live. So I'm going to create a very simple symbol for a hill and a path that leads up through the hill. So here are my six designs back here. I'm going to go for the cupcake as my symbol for cooking. Now what we're going to do is translate this into the dreaming story design. So we want to draw a circle freehand. It doesn't matter how wobbly it is. That's actually part of the charm. And try and get the circle to fill up most of that space. Then we want another circle in the center. Then we're going to do a series of lines, almost like rivers or beams radiating out from the middle of a sun. Each one is individual. They don't have to look exactly the same. When you're drawing, just make hard, flat line. Into these radiating lines, we're going to create some wobbly horizontal lines. Again, you don't have to get the spacing exactly right and they don't have to each look the same as the other. This is all about our individual personalities. So each one of these should have a bit of a personality of its own. Into the center of the design goes the symbol that you've determined for you. Make sure that you try and get your symbol to fill up as much of the circle as possible. As we're drawing all of these symbols freehand, it doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same as the ones that you did on your chart. Yeah. This is a small section. My cupcakes are pretty small. So I'm going to use this section for the cupcakes. What we want to do is keep them rotating so that they're not all in the same direction. We want to make sure that we're leaving enough space around our symbols. So don't go crazy with filling up every single part. Let some of the white space be as equally important as the little symbols that you draw. I'm going to move along to here next. 
look at this one for the necklaces. Into this space up here I'm going to put the ladybugs. Footballs. Lastly, the heel symbol. And there's our completed design. When you choose your colours, it's entirely up to you. They are the colours of your personality. This design can be as colourful as you choose. I would start in the centre and choose the colour that is most significant to you and your important symbol. At the moment, we're going to wash over the whole of the design and then we're going to bring out the individual symbols using markers. So this will just be a soft wash. Next, we're going to look at each of these bands that we created and these should be determined by the colours that are most important to you in terms of opposites. So I really like orange and blue as opposite colours. In each of the bands, I will apply blue. Now because we're starting with broad applications of watercolour first, it does not matter if you go over the lines. In fact, that's part of the charm of this design. Make sure that you use a hairdryer or dry this section naturally first before you apply the second colour. Then you'll get the minimum of bleed from one colour into the other. If it does happen to bleed, it's not a problem. It's perfectly fine to leave some white. So if you're moving up towards the line work and you're unsure about the application of your watercolour, let some of the white come through. The orange that I've chosen has quite a strong red or tangerine base to it. So when it's laid down, it actually looks quite reddish, but we're still getting that fantastic contrast between the blue, a cool color, and this reddy orange, which is a warm color. That's the sort of contrast that you're after. It doesn't matter what color choices you make, but you want that lovely strong contrast. Now we come to applying colour into these segments here. This is where you can just have a whole lot of fun with colour. Just make sure that the application is fairly light so that we'll be able to apply the markers over the top once it's dry. And the idea with this is to play around with blending one colour into another. Again, when you get close to a line, if you're unsure, you can leave some small white edge showing. That's not a problem. Keep the colour soft. In general, three colours per block is probably your ideal. Now the base of our painting is dry, we can start to apply colour over the top. We're going to begin with the stripes again so that we can really see those starting to become the part of the design that unifies all the rest of this because at the moment it's quite a colorful design where our eye isn't quite sure where to rest so we're going to provide some opportunities of regular regularity around the design so that our eye can move around it and rest at various spots so starting with the stripe here what we're going to use is like spots so that our blue band here will have a blue spot in it and our red band will have a red spot. Try and make your marker dots by holding your marker as upright as possible. That way you'll get really clean dots. You can also apply the dots with paint. If you have a very fine brush and acrylic paint, you could create the same effect using paint and a brush rather than with a marker. Let's look at the symbol that is the quintessential symbol for you. When you colour these, you do not have to use the realistic colours of the objects or ideas that you've put into symbols. You can if you want to, but you can also vary the colour within the symbols that you've got. I'm going to select a pink for my palette. Remember that if you don't 
have the color that you're looking for in your markers you might have them in colored pencils if you're using colored pencils the only rule is to press nice and hard with the pencil so that you get a strong even coverage over your symbol the negative space around the palette and again we'll go back to our dot technique Now I'm going to move on to the cupcakes. This is an example of where I've taken the pink but haven't necessarily in each one of those symbols applied it in the same spot. Now that we've completed all the decorative elements of our design, we need to bring some strength of line back in amongst all of this activity. The left hand side of each of these lines. So drawing over the line that we've already got there. So here, I'll go down here. Another way to look at it is that's top line, that's bottom line. Now we'll work the whole way around your inside circle and the whole way around the outside. Just do it in little increments. Now we'll look the same thing, top and bottom lines of your stripes in here. So again, going for that bottom line, bottom line, Now, with a white Posca, or if you don't have one of these, you can use a fine brush and white acrylic paint. We're going to dot over the black lines that we've created. This will give our design some real visual structure. And then moving into dotting those underlined sections on your stripes. Now back with your black and just into your symbol in the middle. Outline that because that's one of the most significant symbols on here. And then lastly, we need to go around the outside of the circle. And there's the completed dreaming story all about me.